In this episode, we take a look at the Sony UWP-D27 wireless microphone system. A few things you might ask, why do you have this janky set here with, with all this extra stuff in it? And the reason why is that, first of all, thank you to Sony for sending over not only the UWP-D27 wireless microphone kit, but also a plug-on transmitter, which is also part of the overall UWPD wireless microphone system, so you can use basically a wireless, either a handheld mic or a boom microphone. In this case, you're hearing the included lavalier microphone into one of the body pack transmitters that's going to the dual channel receiver. And in this case, it's connected to a Sony FX30. That's why we have kind of this funky setup here. They sent over an FX30 little cinema camera along with a 10 to 20 millimeter lens. It's a shorter lens than I'm typically used to using and therefore you can see a lot of my background here. So we've got a sound blanket here. Um, we've got some plumbing over here. <laughs> we have the rim light over here. Uh, my little set here isn't quite set up for that wide of an angle, but that's the whole explanation. And again, what you're hearing right here. So we're not gonna do any sort of processing on the audio aside from loudness normalizing it to minus 23. LUFS, which is kind of a standard loudness for television. So let's get you some audio samples and let you hear what it sounds like first. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. It was easier to know it than to explain why I know it. If you were asked to prove that 2 and 2 made 4, you might find some difficulty, and yet you are quite sure of the fact. One other thing, we do have a light over here that has a fan in it, so it will be something that you hear in most of this video. In the samples, we didn't have the light with the fan, so that's what it sounds like without a fan. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some things here. This is the fourth generation of the UWPD wireless microphone system. And Sony refers to this as their, it's part of their pro wire or pro audio section. Uh, it is largely used for news gathering, to be honest. And I would say it's really meant for sending audio directly into your camera. And you can do that a couple of different ways. If you're using one of the Sony cameras with a multi-interface shoe, that's going to be something like the FX30 or the FX3, then you can bring the audio directly from the receiver into the camera without having to use an external cable. And it's already digital audio, so it's not having to convert it again into digital before sending it into the camera. So that's a really cool feature and probably one of the I guess the hallmark features of this system if you are a Sony camera shooter and you're using a Sony camera that has the multi-interface shoe. Now, I think the first question that people ask is if I'm used to using a lot of the consumer wireless microphone systems out there, like the Rode Wireless Go 2, like the DJI mic, and lots and lots of, of others out there, what's the advantage of moving to this? And some people assume, oh, it's just gonna sound better. Well, maybe, um, and yes, probably maybe sound a little better, maybe not, depending on how things are going and, and what you're using already. But I think the biggest thing that this kind of system provides is that it doesn't operate at 2.4 gigahertz. First of all, all the consumer systems work at 2.4 gigahertz, at least the new, like the Rode Wireless Go To and the DJI mic. And that's the same frequency, very narrow band that is also used by Wi-Fi. And in cases where there's lots of Wi-Fi where you're trying to film, that can create dropouts, audio dropouts. And in some cases, if, it's, if that band is saturated enough, you're not gonna get a connection at all. So that's one of the challenges with those kind of systems. There are some other things too, and I would say that if you want locking plugs on your microphones, that's one thing as well that you can get. Now the Rode Wireless Pro has locking plugs. They're the first one. Uh, you don't get that on the DJI mic, so that's one thing. If you want more control and reliability, again, when working in those Wi-Fi heavy environments, that's where a system like this works better. It's using UHF and it has a much broader range of different channels within that entire range that you can tune the transmitter and the receiver to. So even if there is interference or something else going on at one frequency, you can move manually or even automatically. You can have the system figure it out for you you can move to a different frequency so you're not competing with whatever else happens to be in that particular location. So that's a massive, massive benefit of a system like this. Uh, the other benefit I see is that a lot of those consumer systems have inbuilt batteries. And 
you can't swap them mid-shoot. You have to connect a USB power source, which is kind of a weird thing. So I don't know if you want your talent or uh, the pre people on camera having to also carry a USB battery bank and to attach that to the transmitter if you're doing a really long filming session. But on these, you can just literally pop off the battery pack, swap out the AA batteries, put it back on. Or if you've got another, you can actually buy an additional one, just snap the other one in and you're off and running again. So you can actually take this through a very long production day. Also, a system like this is going to generally, in my experience, be able to transmit farther when you're working outdoors, especially if you're working outdoors in a location where there's no buildings nearby to kind of bounce the, the signal off and, and into the transmitter. Because basically, when you're transmitting from a system like this, the, the signal goes out just basically in a sphere around this entire antenna. So it's not super directional. And so working indoors, I found that throughout my entire home, I couldn't lose the signal. It, it, it held on the entire time through two different doors, upstairs when I had the receiver downstairs, to the opposite end of the house, no dropouts whatsoever, which is fantastic. Outdoors, I was able to go about 50 meters with the transmitter on my back, so it's not directly in line of sight between me and the camera. I could go 50 meters and hold on to a good strong signal. With the wireless, the consumer wireless systems, I generally found that to be, I could go maybe 25, maybe 30 meters in that same location. So that's, a, that's an example of the difference you're gonna see with a system like this. So just a little bit more reliability and you're able to push the limits a little farther. 50 meters away from the receiver. Again, I can't hear this right now, so I don't know what's working, what's not, um, but let's keep going. Let's get to 75 meters. One, two, three. Now, one thing I want to describe about this particular system, and we'll talk about how it compares to some of the other kind of equivalent systems from Sennheiser and, and Deity in just a moment here. But this is a wireless mic system. Well, obviously you plug in an omnidirectional lavalier microphone. It's usually chest worn. It has a two channel camera mount true diversity receiver. So it can receive audio from two separate transmitters at the same time. You can also do the inverse where you can send audio from a single transmitter to two different receivers. So if you need to do that, it's capable of doing that as well. But what's interesting about this one is that it is not a fully digital system. It's actually a hybrid system, which is interesting. So what it does is when you talk into the microphone, it takes it into the transmitter, it converts it from analog to digital, and then it compresses it. Then it converts it back to analog, it modulates it, and then sends it wirelessly to the receiver. That then takes that and converts it back to digital, and it expands it again. And then from there, depending on whether you're using the multi-interface shoe, if you're using the multi-interface shoe, it takes that audio that's already still digital and sends it directly to the camera. That's the ideal situation. If on the other hand, you're using a camera that does not have the multi-interface shoe, you can still get it to work. What it does then is it converts the audio back to analog, and then it goes out of its 3.5 millimeter output into your camera. So it's essentially a, a hybrid system, both analog and digital. And from my point of view, it sounds really good. Now, why do they actually even bother converting the audio to digital before they do the compression and before they do the expansion? And the reason for that is that's a, it's a strategy that's used with wireless microphone systems, with analog wireless microphone systems, where if you don't do that compression and then subsequent expansion, it, it can't transmit very well. So that's the first thing. Secondly, the reason they do the conversion to digital is that it retains some of the audio quality when they're able to precisely compress and expand at the receiver. So what that means is you're gonna have a crisper sound overall, especially for transients where you get the very, a very quick spike in the audio signal in the waveform, that's actually going to be retained by a system like this, whereas the purely analog systems, they generally lose some of that punch on the transients. So it doesn't sound quite as crisp and clear and clean. All right, let's run through the pros and cons really quickly. First of all, again, this is their fourth generation Sony hybrid wireless system. It is a dual channel receiver. Now it is a true diversity receiver when you're just using one transmitter. When you use two transmitters, it turns into a antenna diversity system. So without going into too much detail, in essence, true diversity is a little bit more advantageous and can hold onto a signal a little bit longer, potentially. It's more adept at switching between whichever antenna and receiver. It actually has two receivers in there. Whichever 
receiver radio has the better signal. So it can switch back and forth in between without you ever having to do anything. It just automatically does it. And so that's, that's a really nice thing. So when you're using a single transmitter, it is true diversity. As I mentioned before, it is a digital analog hybrid system. And when it does its conversion to digital, it's actually doing that at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit in its converter. So very, very high quality audio. With the included lavalier microphone and the MI or the multi-interface shoe adapter to a Sony FX30, we did our practical noise floor sample. And what we found is that when we turned all the lights off, turned all the sound off in this room here with sound blankets here and here and there, I was able to record some audio, some dialogue, and then we normalized. And then after the dialogue, I was silent for a few moments. And then we normalized the entire audio clip to minus 23 LUFS, the same audio level we're using here. Then we measured that silent portion, and that came in at minus 70 dB RMS max, with the bulk of the room tone sitting down around minus 75 dB. So what that means in practical terms, this is cleaner than a Rode Wireless Go 2 just by a little bit, and quite a bit cleaner than a DJI mic. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit cleaner, then this is going to do it with the included lavalier microphone. Again, as I mentioned, it's a tunable UHF wireless microphone system. So what happens is that when you first set it up, you can do this very, there are a couple of different scan modes. You can do a more sophisticated version, but the super simple one that has always worked really, really well for us so far is that you literally push a single button on the receiver and it scans through the entire range of available frequencies. And that's 2,772 frequencies that are available, which means you can use up to 16 transmitters on a single set, <laughs> which is probably more than most of us need. Um, but then once that's done and it's found all of the different frequencies, you just hold each of the receiver or the transmitters up to the receiver in turn, and they sync using near field communication, NFC. Or if you're using one of the older transmitters, it can also sync via infrared, which is how they used to do the syncing. So it is compatible with the older systems, but with the newer systems, it's literally just holding the transmitter up to the receiver and it tells it what frequency to use and you're set to go. Super simple setup. It's really, really nice that way. Now, powering, as I mentioned before, is done via two AA batteries in both the receiver and in the transmitters. And we were able to power with nickel metal hydride batteries. These were in a loops. We were able to power the transmitter for a whopping 12 hours and 46 minutes, which was pretty impressive. And then the receiver went for four hours and 31 minutes. So, and again, user replaceable batteries, you can put in double A's of any sort, whether that's alkaline, nickel metal hydride rechargeable or lithium ion rechargeable. And it does a great, great job. You should get longer run times, by the way, with lithium ion than with nickel metal hydride. So did a really, really good job there. You can set the gain manually, or it does have an auto gain feature in the transmitter as well. I prefer to use the manual when, uh, when I can. It just sounds a little bit more clean. If you have a lot of pauses and silent portions, it can tend to boost that up a little bit. So I generally just keep it in the manual mode. The transmitter also supports both line level signals and 48 volt phantom power. So you can connect, for example, a boom microphone up to this if you wanted to do something like that. There is a headphone jack on the receiver and also a 3.5 millimeter microphone input on the receiver. So you can actually take a total of four channels of audio into this dual channel receiver and feed that into your camera. In our outdoor distance test, again, as I mentioned at 50 meters, we were able, even when I had the transmitter on my back, so it was out of line of sight with the camera, we were holding on to a good strong signal. If you keep it within line of sight, you can go even farther than that. So this is actually one of the better systems. The only system I've ever used that worked better than that is if I used my sound devices A10 with a big shark fin antenna up on a mast, I was able to get farther than that. But of all the systems like this, that are basically camera top mount systems, that's the best I've been able to achieve with any sort of UHF system so far, so in this particular location. So it does a really nice job. The max output power is 30 milliwatts from the transmitter. That's when you're in high power. You can also drop it down if you want to save on battery. And the build quality is metal and plastic, and it seems really quite solid. I have no, no doubts that this will hold up nicely over time. As I mentioned before, there is an available XLR plug-on transmitter. So if you wanted to have a wireless boom mic, you could do that or you can also get a handheld mic transmitter. So it's actually a microphone with a transmitter built into the handle 
And uh, that's also part of the system if you wanted to expand your system. One of the beautiful things about this being a hybrid system is that there is virtually no latency. It's less than a millisecond of latency. So your audio will always be in sync with your video. Now, one of the interesting things here is you could also use, if you went maybe with a single channel receiver, you could also use it as an IFB. What does that mean? If you are a sound person, you could actually send audio from your audio recorder, mixer, over into the camera. Or if you wanted somebody else like a director or script supervisor or producer to be able to hear the audio as you're recording it, you could give them a set of headphones with a receiver and they would be able to listen to it. So it's a pretty versatile system that way. You can use it just for other things than just as a wireless microphone system, but also as an interruptible foldback, which is what IFB stands for. It comes with a one-year warranty and the kit with two transmitters, two body pack transmitters, and a receiver, dual channel, is $1,230 USD. Now, if you wanted a single channel kit, you can get those for less expensive, I think somewhere in the $600 range, that are also part of this same system. Now, there are a couple of cons. Let's go ahead and cover those. Number one, it's a little thing, but sometimes it's a little annoying, but the ergonomics are not the very best I've ever experienced. For example, in the menus, when you go to select what type of battery you're using, which is important to make sure that your um, battery remaining meter is accurate, you get to choose type one, type two, or type three, instead of <laughs> alkaline, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion. So it'd be easier to remember if they would just put alkaline, nickel metal hydride, lithium ion, but they put type one, type two, type three. It's kind of a Sony thing to do. And then also the other thing is a little nitpick as well. And that is, is that the transmitters use their own proprietary wiring scheme on the 3.5 millimeter microphone input, which means you have to have a microphone that is specifically for the Sony system or specifically wired for the Sony system. And in fact, we used a Sankin Cos 11 that's wired for Sony and it worked beautifully. But if you Go to buy a sync and you're going to have to have it specifically terminated or wired for a Sony system. And you can do that at places like True Audio or Gotham Sound or other places like that. A couple of notes as well, just so that you're aware. There is no line output on the receiver. It is a microphone level output. And it does have a little boost feature. So if you're using a camera that doesn't have the best microphone preamplifiers, like a hybrid camera of some sort, you can boost the level somewhat, but it's not true line level. So just keep that in mind. This system is really meant for feeding audio directly to camera and not to a sound mixer necessarily. You can do that, of course, but it's really made to feed the audio into camera. And then second, the antenna are not user replaceable. They're not using SMA con connectors here. So you can't, for example, connect a log periodic dipole array or a shark fin antenna to the receiver. It's just not an option. It wasn't made for that. Again, it's made for camera top use. Now, most common question I think we're going to get here is, well, how does this compare to a Sennheiser G4 system or to the Sennheiser EWDP or to the up and coming Deity Theo system? Compared to the Sennheiser G4 EW100, first of all, they're comparable in terms of the technology they're using. They're both using analog transmission. Um, but I would say that the Sony has some definite advantages. Its digital compounding on the Sony definitely results in better audio quality. It has a wider tuning range on the Sony system, so that's a nice thing as well. And there is no portable dual channel receiver option with the Sennheiser G4, at least that I'm aware of. It's all single channel. So those are kind of the benefits here. So from my point of view, I would definitely go for the Sony over the Sennheiser G4 system. Now, what about the Sennheiser EWDP system? Now, that's a fully digital system. So the Sennheiser is fully digital. That's not necessarily in and of itself the definition, just because it's digital doesn't mean it's better. <laughs> just keep that in mind. But I will say that the Sony system did substantially better outdoors, uh, transmitting a farther distance. The Sony system, of course, has a dual channel receiver, which the EWDP, you have to stack multiple single channel receivers if you want to do that. And then finally, the one advantage that the Sennheiser does have is that there's no gain setting on the transmitter. You handle all of that at the receiver, which is kind of a cool thing. So where does this end up? I think it depends. If you need a dual channel system and you want the multi-interface direct audio path into your camera because you're filming with a Sony camera with a multi-interface shoe, then the Sony is a no-brainer from my point of view. So that's how those two compare. And then finally, the Deity Theos. The Deity Theos looks fantastic on paper. The specs look really impressive. 
It has a wider tuning range. It has a built-in 32-bit float recorder on the transmitter, which, by the way, in the United States, you can either use the recorder or the transmitter function at a time. You can't do both of them at the same time just because of patent limitations, not because of technology limitations. But the Theos isn't out yet, and I've pre-ordered mine, but I haven't received it yet, so <laughs> that's all theoretical as to whether or not it's better than the Sony system. It also has a dual-channel receiver, has all those additional features. We'll see when it comes out if it's better or not, but I would say that for those that are filming with the Sony cameras that have the multi-interface shoe, you need a dual-channel wireless system that's more reliable than the consumer systems out there. I would say the fourth generation UWDP is a fantastic choice. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.